Good day, everybody. It's Greg Schnell, and I am here with the May 21st edition of the Canadian Technician. Thanks for taking the time to join me. We got lots to talk about this week with uh, markets really trying to make us work here to figure out which way it wants to go. Uh, first of all, to reach me, don't forget that you can email me, gregs at stockcharts.com, or you can follow me on Twitter at Schnell Investor. Our agenda today, TSX still um, hasn't been able to get back up and try and take out the prior high. So at this part, at this point, it's a failed breakout. Um, so that's a concern. Um, and I'm still of the belief that we're on full alert for the right side of a major market top. Um, energy sectors abysmal. Um, Canadian tech is doing well. We're going to get into each of the sectors here, but energy is by far the worst and Canadian tech is horrible or is doing great mostly on the back of Shopify um, but there are other names defensives are also doing okay things like pipelines and utilities and we're going to go through some SCTR rankings just to back up those uh, stories so first of all let's get into the Canadian sectors and the thing I want to point out here is Infotech has done great this is over the last month so it's up a half a percent per day um, so that's pretty strong. And the Canadian industrials have recently perked up on the back of uh, the buyout of WestJet and Air Transat. That's helped a lot. The railways are right at the top of their charts. So um, they look okay, but you can see materials and energy, um, you know, can't spell dog much easier than that. So that uh, makes it hard for the Canadian market to rise up. And there's another big component over here, the financials, and they're down 1.5% over the last month. So not a whole bunch to get optimistic about. Consumer discretionary also uh, usually pretty important and it's not doing very well. But you can see these staple stocks, well, they aren't necessarily flying higher. At least they're pushing higher. And so that's helpful. Okay. Um, I want to show... Uh, well, let's just get into this big chart first of all. So this is the bullish percent index for the... Um, Canadian Stock Exchange and in the bottom here in red is the Canadian stock market and you can see we briefly uh, ran up and we've rolled over and just kind of jogged back a little and now the question is do we have enough energy to resurge ourselves back above this prior high and we have about 58% of the stocks on a buy signal and I'm going to get into that a little bit. One of the reasons it makes it interesting is we've had a downtrend in bullish percent. We haven't taken out the prior high yet but we've the way I've displayed it, we've broken the trend. So it, it does suggest trying to be a little more optimistic, but we've got some other charts that are going to uh, really drill a hole through that, and, and we'll talk about those right away here. So the first one is, what percentage of stocks are above the 50-day moving average and only 50% of them are? So that makes it very difficult um, to to see. Now on the uh, percentage of stocks above the 200 day moving average, we're barely above that. We're at, you know, 58%. And so we've got this flat market. We've got um, not a lot of stocks being able to um, get above their 200 day, which doesn't really help. Normally you'd like to see this big bull market run. In here, you'll see that this was the, the prior high that we were trying to take out in July of 2018. And when we were trying to take that out, um, you know, we, we ran up and we were up here for a couple of days. We kind of ran up against it, pulled back, shot up against it for one day, and then we've been kind of unwinding since. And now over the last couple of days, uh, we've been trying to move marginally higher. And hey, they're white bars, so at least that uh, that suggests we're trying. The, the issue I have, and this is just a simple ratio, but the issue I have is we're not, we don't have, um, they're not moving above the 50-day moving average um, as much as they are above the 200. So what that usually means is when you're below the 50-day but above the 200, the market is pulling back. Now the real question is, do we have enough strength to get going again? And this is what happened in the June-July period. So here's June. We're just going to use this indicator, and then I'll scroll scroll up and show you what the chart did. Um, but you can see that we were downtrending. We got to July here, and we got below this 1% or 95.95% uh, level, which means more stocks were under their 50 than were above the 200. And when we started to see that, that really broke down. Now, late in the year, this started to reverse, and the only reason it starts to reverse is because the the 
they were also falling below the 200 day and so that's why this ratio starts to climb but the the good news is is off this low here we had a big surge where all of a sudden the percentage of stocks above the 50 day moving average were really flying and they hadn't got above the 200 day yet so um so that help so you can see this is the ratio between the two but one of the things to notice is when it gets below this 0.95 level it's it's a caution zone and you can see our momentum is right at zero on the PPO and if we go back to January of last year you'll remember all of a sudden we dropped below zero and that was a pretty big deal and then here in July and August time frame our momentum went below zero and we stayed there for a couple of weeks and then we fell down so we've been down here for a week already and now the real question is do we have the power to bounce up or are we just rolling back over again now let's go back up so again here's the may high in this ratio it doesn't mean anything but the july high when we start to fall below one uh, means something to me so here's the july high and the ratio pulling over and now here we are again with this ratio falling down uh, below this one percent level in april pretty much marked the top and now we're sitting here just trying to get back up so the question is are we building this kind of a rally or are we actually building something that can be more forceful and we're going to bounce out of here and keep going higher I suspect that we're right about here just trying to bounce off the 50 day maybe it's this one but we're rolling over and we're going lower and the reason I say that is we seem to be having a problem with um, a lot of the stocks not having uh, any real momentum, especially in our big major groups, the miners, the energy, or the the banks. So that leaves one third of the stocks to do the heavy listing, lifting, and I don't really think that's going to happen. So here we are, the percentage of stocks, of, um, sorry, this is the new highs minus new lows. That's just a little too big. I'll shrink that. Um, there. Uh, the percentage of stocks... No, the number of stocks making new 52-week highs minus new 52-week lows. And again, we're, we're not getting above this 50 level, so we can rally a little bit. But the problem is, you can see we've been declining since March on this statistic, and it doesn't really help us. And back here in, in uh, May, June, July, we started to wobble around the zero level, and that's kind of how the market topped out, and then we went lower from there. Uh, again... I'd like to see us have a lot more thrust, and we haven't. So, um, and what it looks like just when we have a big bull market, if this is your first time watching my presentations, um, this is how it looks when we have a lot of stocks hitting new highs. And as it does that, you'll notice that this ratio, even though February 16th was near the lows in the stock market, all of a sudden this ratio had more stocks hitting new highs and no stocks hitting new lows so this ratio can quickly jump up so in early february we hit the um well january in this case we hit the lows and by you know march we were finishing and april we were getting up to a nice robust number the problem is for the last year and a half we have had these rallies with 50 stocks or so kind of hitting new highs and it's been trying to push up the market but what we really need is this big wide breadth where everything is trying to lift the market and we haven't had that for a while so we'll keep watching but that's kind of what I'm waiting for and uh, for the uh, new highs new lows just displaying it slightly different we can also just do a moving average and you can see off the rally we've come up and we we you know this is an eight period so it takes eight of them together because the line was pretty jerky well we dipped down and now briefly we're trying to get back up here but we've seen this kind of behavior before where it just kind of limps along and the real question again is if we're going to get some thrust we really need kind of more than one sector um, to participate and again it helped a lot this week having um, the Air Transat merger discussions and the WestJet buyout. That really kind of put uh, a big push into the industrial group and lifted them above. So here's the advanced decline line, and you can see that we've been declining highs in terms of the advanced decline, and this is a moving average again. Uh, but what you see here is we're right at the zero level, and the problem Obviously, if, if we have about the same number of advancers over decliners, we're not really going to get it anywhere. We need a lot more advancers pushing up the market. 
So that was a moving average. This is the individual daily statistic, and this is uh, current for today. And what you see is uh, we're bouncing up here. But again, it, to me, it looks like we pretty much made a major um, top on this indicator un until we start to break some trend lines or get something going um, that would get me more bullish. But I, you know, I think really the fact that we had those two mergers is what's caused that little push up here um, in the airline space. And so that's more of a factor there. Here is the U.S. market, and this is for the 20th of May. It hasn't updated yet. I'm just recording this at end of day, so in my time, the stock market closes at 2 o'clock. Um, but recording this here, and what you see here is we're below zero, so it'll bounce up um, with uh, Tuesday's positive price action a little bit. But again, the problem is we weren't seeing any of this, and now we are. So this is the number of stocks. Uh, making new highs minus the number of stocks making new lows and plotting that value. So um, this is starting to look weaker and weaker. And you can see back in uh, April, May, June, July, we wobbled, but we didn't really break down. And then in September, we really kind of cracked. And when that fell apart, that was a big deal. Well, the issue for me is that we just haven't been in this big bull market phase. And, and that's the problem. We're just kind of wobbling along. So we can kind of make new highs. But the issue is... Uh, we don't have a lot of uh, breadth helping us do that. There aren't a lot of stocks pushing higher. Okay, so this is the Canadian dollar. And the point I want to make on the Canadian dollar is that we just keep grinding slightly lower. We haven't been able to do anything. We're just below 75 cents. And so um, as long as that remains in play, we're, uh, you know, probably says commodities aren't going to do that well. Here's the TSX from the first of the year. We're up 15.5%. But the problem is our momentum is right at zero on the index. And again, PPO is just a momentum indicator. Uh, on the next chart, you'll see what I mean. So here we have the PPO, and it was below zero from, remember the July was the high, and it just stayed below zero all the way through here, tried to rally briefly into December, and then rolled back over. But now we're right at zero, and the real question is, have we got enough momentum to get us going again, or do we roll back over? And uh, again, I think most of the momentum we had in the last couple of days um, was based on WestJet, Air Canada, um, Air Transat, all that kind of stuff. Not so much that the overall market was doing anything. So I still want to, I mean, it's up. That's good. Um, I still want to be careful here, though. I don't get the feeling that we've changed anything just yet. Okay, U.S. dollar continues to push new to higher highs, and it did again today. Um, so when this chart updates, you'll see it continuing to go higher. But the U.S. dollar breaking out is harder on commodities, so that makes it more difficult to start to buy things like gold and oil. Here is um, the Japanese yen, and what we're looking for on the yen, if um, when the yen spikes, usually that can give us a place to um, watch, because typically gold and yen tend to move together, not 100%, but they tend to move together. So that's what we're watching for. But you can see momentum is pretty flat right here around zero, briefly trying to turn up. This is a weekly chart, but we rolled over last week. Um, so we made the high on um, early in the week. And then uh, by the end of the week, we we're right near the lows. This week, we're tracing down lower again. So no real direction on the yen. It just keeps Sorry, it just keeps uh, pushing us down in this uh, channel. Here's the Aussie dollar, and the Australian dollar is very close to breaking uh, the 2016 low. So that kind of tells you, commodity-wise, how weak things are. And the interesting part is the Aussie stock market is headed higher. Um, it's actually pushed to new highs. So that's um, impressive to see. The real thing we want to keep watching is the currencies. I think does a good job of helping us with the commodities and at this point it's pushing lower and so we're really worried about this low being taken out now maybe it's a double bottom when we bounce out of here that's why we look at the charts all the time okay here's XEU the euro and what we see on the euro is momentum is flat down here and we're just generally dribbling lower much like the Canadian dollar no real push one way or the other but no real strength either 
Uh, the TSX monthly, we have this big, huge trend line that I've drawn on my chart. And, you know, this was kind of visited once and then visited for multiple months. And then in 2015, 2016, it was like eight months we were down here. And now we've been down here for almost a year. Um, a brief trip above it there for a, a month or two as we tried to go through the prior highs. Now we briefly ran up and now we're back below. So uh, the, the concern I have on the Canadian market is we continue to make these lower highs and lower lows in momentum and not in price. And so this brief push for a couple of days and then rolling back over looks to me like another failed breakout, not to um, repeat the story, but back the same thing we did here, the same thing we did here, just barely getting above the prior high and rolling back over. Okay, this is a zoomed in version, so we're looking at a weekly chart here. What we see is just, you know, these kind of momentum bumps and again I showed you on the high low indicator we're just not getting the breadth that we need to kind of really make a difference so um, well everybody's all excited we're up 15 percent this year that sure isn't what happened last year we you know started pretty much at the highs and finished pretty much at the lows so uh, taking 2000 and uh, 2018 and and just saying how did you do um, it was pretty tough from December to d end of December this was a uh, 16 5 16 420 and we finished at around 1450 so 14500 so we're down pretty close to 2000 points and now we've rallied back up and everybody's talking about how bullish the market is well we're just back to where we were um, a year and a half ago so uh, let's keep it in context here. What we're trying to do is make higher highs and not just kind of get to this level and keep falling over. And currently we're just trading right on the 50 day moving average. And you can see, you know, when you kind of do that, that just basically slows. What we want to do is come down to the 50 day and bounce and bounce and bounce. And uh, we haven't done that. This is the 10 week or 50 day moving average. So Okay, uh, let's keep moving. Uh, big picture, 20-year timeline of Canada relative to the S&P 500. When we had the big commodity bull market, we outperformed. That stopped in 2011, and we've kind of been continuing the trend down. There's a small break so far, but obviously Canada hasn't been outperforming yet. So um, I, I would say at least we're sideways this year, not <laughs> underperforming the U.S., so that's a big bullish um, thing. I'm going to roll right past this chart. Okay, here's the Fed meetings. We had one early May. We don't have another one till mid-June. So we keep watching. But one of the things to watch for now is we've got this head and shoulder setup coming right in on this 2800 line. And so you um, need to be aware that that's a, a potential for us. That, I think that line's pretty important and you can see why. It was support and resistance all through uh, 2018. And when it finally uh, failed here, came down to it, we struggled around it, and then we just literally let go in mid-December. And here we sit right on that trend line. So uh, there's lots of reasons to keep watching that area on the chart. So 2800, and again, we visited it. Okay, so one thing I want to talk about here is the uh, options expiration. We, we basically haven't made any progress since March. And with that, uh, the the main issue we've got obviously is we've got this flat 200 day moving average and if we fall back below that I think that's a big deal. The NASDAQ on the other hand is sitting here um, and it's clearly lower than it was in, in March, uh, sorry in April and the March options expiration we're back to kind of the same range but the the concern we have you know these these two candles aren't that bullish, the ones we just made, um, they kind of look like spinning tops where we test higher, test lower and kind of finish, test higher, test lower and finish. Um, no real uh, directional clues, but again, after the kind of big up thrust we had middle of last week and then to gap down um, to Monday, and now, you know, I'll call it average um, effort trying to get out of the hole here. And it doesn't mean we won't climb out. But I think the bigger thing to watch for here is, um, you know, what's the impetus to drive us higher and uh, trying, to, trying to find some areas of the market that are going to start to outperform. Because when we look at the U.S. market, let me just go get a predefined group here. Uh, the defensives, whoops, let's pick one month. Uh, the defensives are clearly outperforming, and so that doesn't bode well 
that's their absolute performance and this is the relative perform or the absolute performance of the growth areas of the market and that this is obviously not set up very bullish and so the issue we have is that the US market um, needs to get going uh, more on this side if we're going to start having a growth market and that would push the stock market to higher highs I don't think this defensive structure right now is going to do it for us okay so here's the CRB and what we see on this particular one is um, you know we've I've got the Alexander Elders colors turned on here and and essentially when you're red you wouldn't buy them on a weekly basis and you at least need a blue one um, to be able to start buying them and we don't have that yet the one thing I will say is we made a higher low in momentum and I could take this horizontal trend line in momentum and if this is going to start breaking out this would be very bullish for me I'd like to see this a lot now I don't know if that's what's going to happen here but that's what we need to see happen is this momentum kind of bounce through here and turn up at this point it hasn't um, you know what's more likely from from my perspective is we're below both the 10 and the 40 here 10 week and 40 week moving averages we chop a bit and then we break down chop a bit and break down um, so that's kind of what I'm expecting more of and oils at a really important resistance level of $64 so we're gonna I'll show you that on the energy chart in just a second but here's uh, the telecom or technology group and it's been soaring now we've had a couple of wide swinging weeks here which is usually some indecision starting to set in after a big rally and for those of you that have followed the Spotify chart it's been tremendous uh, let's just go grab it uh, Shopify Spotify um, Shopify is the one I mean and you know this chart was 180 bucks 160 on the lows and uh, 377 the other day so quite a tremendous run okay so that's technology so obviously that's pushing things up and and that's helped support this market um, without a doubt here is crude oil and the point I want to make on crude let's just zoom in whatever four years will do it and then I just want to draw a horizontal line at $64 and we'll just make that line brown and what we see here on this line is it this was support through the the topping structure and now it's been kind of setting up as resistance and we're there right now we're at 63 bucks but the real question is can we hold up here and if not I think you know this this uptrend looks broken with a pullback no big deal we've seen that before kind of in around the same level the real question is does all this Middle East pressure um, start to send oil higher and if so maybe we could finally get a rally in the energy stocks but it's been hard to hard to hope for that because they just haven't behaved very well okay so here is the Canadian energy sector so that was the price of oil this is the oil stocks as a group and they're heading lower and as you can see this trend line from 2014 pretty much goes straight down uh, briefly got so we broke down got to resistance support became resistance so it's support up here when it bounces off it becomes resistance when it comes up here bangs its head and falls away um, so the question is do we come down here and just make a higher low and then we start to turn up like this did here or do we go up here roll over and come down very hard and you can see that if that happens that's a pretty big problem for us and it looks to me more like it's probably going to just fall away I don't have any good reason for oil to bounce other than um, the Middle East will try to cut back supply Russia said they'll they'll add supply as they feel necessary uh, but we do have the instability in Iran and the Strait of Hormuz that could uh, pressure the price of oil now whether or not the Canadian stocks will feel that that would be another question to ask just because we have no app outlet for the oil to get to the coast okay uh, financial services so this is the Canadian banks and insurance companies and um, uh, asset managers and what you see is this downtrend line here we're having trouble getting through it now if we could start to 
push up above, that would help. I will say when we get to the um, SCTR summary that we're going to find that um, not so much the, the regular banks doing well, but some of the insurance companies inside the financial sector are actually pushing this up quite a bit, and that looks a lot better. Um, okay, yeah, I want to show you this perf chart. What this perf chart shows is each one is a line for a bank, and there's also the S&P 500 on there. But you can see that the two at the bottom here, Laurentian Bank and Canadian Western Bank, really, really poor, definitely underperforming since the beginning of 2018. If you look at um, Scotiabank and this other line is uh, CIBC, they've underperformed as well. Now, the other four banks have done okay, BMO, National, TD, and Royal. They're up here near the top. And they're doing okay, but, you know, really, since last year, the Canadian market did horribly, so this is actually a pretty good improvement. These are up around 7% to 10% over that period of time. If we go from the beginning of 2019, obviously things look a little more rosy um, if we just merge everything together here. But you can see the, the changes, you know, the worst is 7% for Scotiabank. And that's because they're heavy in emerging markets. And the best one up here is BMO and uh, TD and Royal are both doing quite well as well. So anyway, well, here's TD at 12%. Kind of the grouping, the main grouping, if you notice, is just between this 11 or 12% and 14%. It's kind of what the average of the banks are. Um, but, yeah, this BMO one's really an outstanding chart. That one looks pretty good, actually. Uh, so that's kind of how I see it. They're just clustered together. And, again, performing in line with the TSX. I think the TSX, we said, was up 15%. And this is up just slightly less than that. Okay. Um, oh, and for Scotiabank, uh, again, it's pretty much tracking emerging markets, uh, Scotiabank in red and emerging market ETF in the U.S. in black. Okay, nothing really to see. We haven't done much over the last week. Um, our momentum's right at zero, so just watching that closely. And again, um, we got to kind of this triple top on here up around 312. So as a group, they're they're going nowhere and you can see they basically tracked the S&P 500 this purple area going sideways for the most part was in a bigger downtrend for all of last year and now um, you know trying to rally a little bit but not great anyway following the S&P um, and this red line just shows you kind of the same thing this is the ETF that drops tracks the financials the 10-year um, continues to drizzle into the lower right-hand corner here. 2356 was the previous low, and 2361, this is the U.S. 10-year. Nothing really different to report. I will say I saw something on my Twitter feed today with $11 trillion in um, bond assets where the, the people have bought a bond and are actually paying to own the bond. Uh, because it yields less, it, it loses money on interest, right? So it's it's yielding less um, than par. So uh, really a, a surprising situation here where you're actually giving money back to the, the place that you gave the money to, so you're paying it to leave it, it with them and not making anything. So that's a really interesting thing, negative interest rates. And so as long as that situation per persists and we've got 11 trillion I mean that's got to tell you something wonky is going on out there I've got a whole bunch of trend lines here but there's one right through the middle that we could draw at 26 that's up a little bit from here I don't know if, let's just see if I can put that on there quickly and just solid thick and let's go black just to get through everything and the the main thing so we we had this pennant going with the red yellow and green here or kind of a, a rising channel um a wedge and then it fell apart well this black level was pretty much resistance all the way through we broke through it in early 2018 now we've come back down through it you know this was a 52 week low rallying off and trying to hold above that but again the trend is still clearly down no change in that 
Okay, so financials have it tough. The banks, it's going to be, you know, how do you make money with uh, flat interest rates? So we'll see if they, they're they able to keep performing. But in general, it doesn't look very good. The healthcare is influenced greatly by the marijuana names, and it's rolled over in momentum, but it's stayed holding up in price. But this 120 level is a pretty important place on the chart. And the 200-day moving average or the 40-week moving average is a rising line here, getting up right around the same level. It's at 118.70. So, uh, with with all of that going on, I think just be very careful in these marijuana names. As much as they've been trying to rally, and Organogram is going to trade publicly in the U.S. here right away. Um, the chart, the, you know, this chop in here is is very difficult to uh, handle, and some of the swings on the individual names are 20 and 30 percent. So, you've got to be prepared for some volatility there. That's for sure. Consumer discretionary is broken below its 10-week moving average, and now it's sitting right on its 40-week. So this is an important place for it to bounce. What I'm concerned about is it continues to make lower highs in momentum, and this looks to me like it's about to roll over. So if this doesn't rally this week, it's going to fall back below the zero line, back below the 40-week moving average, and continue in what we would call a bear market trend. So keep watching this consumer discretionaries. Those are an important area for us if they don't get going. Consumer staples, on the other hand, has been a safety play, um, and people, you know, we broke through this level coming in January, and even out of the big bull market, or out of the big run we've had, uh, th these didn't move very fast. They're up about 10 or 15 percent, which is okay, kind of similar to the market, but at least they're still holding up. The one thing I found in our consumer staple sector is they don't pay a huge dividend. Um, so it hasn't been a great place to hide for dividends, but it still continues to, you know, we're up in the top right hand corner of the chart. And uh, this is just the daily version, and you can just see there's a big trend line established here. I wouldn't want to see that break. Okay, the industrials, again, um, with the news out of WestJet, that really gave us this big spike. And what we see here is this pushed right up into the top right-hand corner. And these two lines here are the railways, this green and blue. And I've just um, put them behind the chart to just see. But you can tell that they're clearly above their prior highs. So as long as the railways are up in the top of the chart, their charts, that's probably going to help this big trend. Uh, but this week it was the airlines that made all the difference. Okay, telecom. This chart is harder to map than I would like. Um, and the reason is the momentum is rolling over, but we're trying to hold this breakout level. And so as long as this 177 level holds, I think you can still own them. They pay a big dividend and they also um, are considered defensive. So if the stock market was going to have trouble, then you'd want to be in these. Uh, with with this big push to the upside, I mean, I still think it's one of the better areas, mostly because of the yield. But, um, you know, we this this momentum here on the stochastic showed us to be at the lowest level in eight years. And now we've rallied all the way back up above 80. So it still looks pretty promising. And, you know, amidst all of the volatility we've had, um, these have held up pretty well. So, you know, I still think it's an okay place to own if you don't mind a little bit of whipsaw. Okay, the the uh, capped materials index, this is rolled over. This would be gold and the coppers and the, the other metal miners. Uh, very difficult chart. And the reason is this big downtrend is in play. And you can see that this 220 level I had marked here, we're under pressure on that level again. PPO right at zero, so rolling over. We're on a weekly chart here. This is pretty important. And we're the the stochastics are still pointed down and below 50, which is very negative. And it's also bad that it rolled over and never got back up to 80. That makes it really weak. And we saw that in this case here too. So um, no, nothing to be too confident about on the materials. And just uh, the one thing we should look at, and I haven't checked before, so let's just do it right now, is the tech resources chart. Yeah, and that pretty much uh, describes how m metals are going right now. There was a brief rally in things like Stelco and Russell Metals on Friday on the back of uh, the news of the tariffs being dropped. So that was somewhat helpful. Um, but again, you know, the real issue is global demand has been slowing. So that's a problem.
Okay, global gold index, this chart just continues to wear you out. So uh, briefly started to make higher highs here over the July high and then fell apart and it's been falling for two months. It's trying to find support around its 200 day moving average. The I've got the shake and money flow down here in the bottom and you can just see it's still negative. It's in kind of this range, but if that could start to get positive at all, but we don't seem to have that yet. So keep watching it, but you know, it's just been such a tough one and the commodities are weak. So um, here's the global gold index. And again, we're back testing this downtrend line. So it gives me some hope if this full stochastic could turn back up this week and PPO bounce at zero, this would be a very bullish place to bounce. Um, so while I want to throw it all away, there's a really good reason to look right here right now at the gold area. And that's because of the horizontal support back testing this down sloping trend line. The momentum bouncing off zero would be good. And you can see, you know, going back whatever, six years on this chart, um, it hasn't bounced off zero at all. It just keeps rolling over. So it's the one place that we'd like to see it happen. And if that was to happen, that could be quite bullish. Full stochastic should turn in and move back above 20% here on a weekly chart. And if that did, I think at least you've got a place to put a stop very close. And if it start to take off to the upside. But it's, it's difficult. Here's the price action on the US dollar right at the bottom of this chart. You can see the US dollar really pushing up higher. A little bit of volatility earlier today, but US dollar up, what does gold do, comes down. And so until this trend in the dollar starts to weaken, and it, it looks to me like it's accelerating, not decelerating. This is a 60-minute chart, so that doesn't show the trend. But I'd say on that big one I showed earlier in the presentation, um, a, a strong US dollar looks to be setting up more likely than anything else. Okay, income trusts, you know, they've been up in the top right hand corner, so holding up pretty well. I just want to make sure they stay up there. I have a feeling the whole globe is slowing, and so um, that's a big concern for me. Uh, having a, a slow global environment, I don't think sets up very well for all of these, and they could all uh, pull back. Uh, these things pay a nice high yield, so I know why everybody's in them. The real question is whether or not it can keep finding um, support here at these really high levels. Anyway, momentum is trying to roll over near zero. I would just say this 330 level really has to hold. I don't want to see it get broken. Um, these things fell pretty hard in the fourth quarter um, with the rest of the market, so it's not like they're um, unaffected by market volatility. Okay, utilities, this is a nice chart, and they just keep working their way higher, and um, when we get to the scooter rankings, you'll see that, but these, this is pushing up and trying to break through new all-time highs for the index. Um, it, it does look pretty extended, um, but again, everything looks pretty um, difficult here in the Canadian market trying to find yield, so I see why people are hovered in here. Okay, I want to show a couple of things on copper. Uh, this is the long-term chart for copper and again we're trying to hold pick a number 260 just we want 260 to hold and we do not want to see this 17-year trend line break that would be problematic and momentum is rolling over right near zero. If I just turn on the zoom thumbnail that gives me the little box over here on the right hand side. Um, if I turn that on, the point is, is you can see copper really kind of pulled back hard. And again, monthly chart, but look at the momentum rolling over right at zero. We don't want to see that. That's what happened in 2013. Um, you know, usually that marks a pretty significant place on the chart. So be careful here. Copper is kind of a global demand story. And if that was to be the case, um, you know, if you're only invested in technology, maybe you don't care, but we still need copper for a lot of the technology, electric cars and all that kind of stuff. Um, so uh, don't don't ignore that chart. And this is copper on the weekly setup. And what we see here is, again, momentum's already below zero on the weekly. That's just never a good place on the charts. So um, a, a lot of caution for global demand here is a big issue for me. Um, let's show you lumber. 
And what you see on this lumber chart is really bad performance here. Uh, last week came down very, very hard. And now we're about to test this 300 level again. So watch this closely, but look at what your momentum is doing. It continues to fall away. Unless this can start to rally back through, I think that's a pretty big deal. And so just be aware, lumber is a pretty good economic indicator as well. And so for this to be pulling back so hard isn't comforting at all. Okay. Um, okay, so that was good. Now I do um, just see if there's anything else. Yeah, I, do, I wanted to quickly show you. I'm going to go one more chart back. Okay, so this is the good news. Here's Australia pushing out to new highs. And this is updated as of today. So that's great. May 21st pushing to new highs, very solid. It had broken its uptrend in momentum and is now kind of wavering. Now it's still trying to make a higher high here. Let's watch and see if it can, but this is very bullish. Now it might just be on the back of its weak currency, but nonetheless, at this point, it's still going on to a higher high, so that's bullish. Russia is breaking this big 10-year downtrend for the first time in a couple of um, well, it, it tried back here in 2018, and so now it's at the second month above that level. We're still mid-month, but watching Russia above 1,200, I think, is pretty important. You know, having Australia and Russia hit new highs in the same month here, that's pretty bullish for commodities. The only problem is commodities are going the other way, so I'm struggling a little bit with how this is all going to work out. Brazil is making a lower high in momentum, even though we've made a higher high in price. So it can kind of jog sideways, but I think the real issue for us here is if Brazil starts to break down, that would probably tell us um, something else about commodity. So keep watching because it's not a one-way street on what these charts are telling us. And again, the Canadian markets rolled over too. I showed you this chart of check tech resources and we've seen the chart of oil um, in the energy sector. So it's not all... Uh, perfect. And here's the South African stock index, heavily commodity related. Not one I'd want to put more than a penny on for, for guidance as to global things. But the reason I bring it up is it's another commodity market where momentum has shrunk to zero um, on the PPO. And so with that, uh, that makes me much more cautionary. Okay. Um, I did... I have one chart here that I think is pretty interesting, and let me just show it to you. And this is the three-month Treasury yield in the U.S. And you can see a big rising, rising market. And then right now it's still above its 200-day moving average, and these ticks are pretty small. Um, you know, they're down to 0 .000, um, you know, three one one thousandths of a of a percent and what you see here is they're very close to new six month lows but they're also hovering just above their 200 day moving average when i widen this chart out what you see is that in in 2000 you saw this break and in 2007 the early part of 2007 you saw this line break and we're you know we're sitting right here so at least it's a place to be watchful of it doesn't tell us that um, the world is going to end or anything there's no predicting of this big thing yet it could be like 2000 where it's a pullback I don't like the way the global growth is lined up and that's a, a really difficult um, issue and so if you check global PMIs we've had like 13 or 14 months in a row of declining PMIs and so with that um, that's a pretty big deal and I'm I'm looking at this as at least you know why to be cautious that we could have a bigger drop than we might th normally expect going back to 2000 and 2007 those are pretty good examples Obviously, the chop in here was all QE related, so uh, pretty much have to kind of ignore what it said there. But here, coming back to this level is a uh, is something to watch. Um, for bullish percent indexes, I'm going to start with Canada and then work my way to the other one. Um, the, for the Canadian market, again, we're, we're sitting right in here around this 58% level and 58% of the stocks are above their 200-day moving average. That's okay. It's not great. We'd like it to be up above this 65 or 70 level. And again, here's this 60 level. You go back to 2007, you know, we kind of got up near 55 and rolled over all through that period. Um, in 2012, we had a 
pretty big pullback here and this got up to 65. I'm just saying this is a low level to roll over at. So be cautious. This isn't obvious that it goes higher. Um, if, if we take the, the S&P 500, so a big group of stocks, this is below my comfort zone where it's below 65 or 70. You can see as long as it's bouncing up in that area, it's a pretty nice place to be all of 2017. And then 2018, it fell hard and now it made a lower low. So we've come up, made a new high at 80%, immediately gave that back. And we went from 80% of the stocks to being being on a buy signal around the 1st of April to only 60 now. So um, quite a dramatic change and I think one that's pretty important. So keep watching and the percentage of stocks above the 200 day moving average is only at 59% and you can see back here um, early April it was 72%. Again if you're going to get below 60 on this index it's a very cautionary place and I've made some um, red arrows here at this 60% level. Um, when it comes from above, that's not really a good place. And, you know, this was a, a quick dip down. This was a little dip down. But just, you know, in general, 59% is below where we were all of 2016, 2017 on a weekly close. So um, pretty important place on the chart. I don't think I want to see that get out of hand. Looking at the, the NASDAQ um, overall market, we're at 49%. That's just bearish. And only 41% are on or above their 200-day moving average. Pretty hard to have a bull market with only 40% of the stocks above their 200-day. And if we went to the New York composite, so all the stocks on the New York, um, we're at 54% and 52%. It's just too weak is the problem. And so... Um, you can see in 2018 when we rallied all through the summer we just couldn't get too many stocks participating and then we fell down hard. So while, while the broader averages, the New York Composite and the NASDAQ Composite, um, aren't really something you can trade off of, in terms of breadth they're much more helpful to at least see when the market is starting to break down. They'll, these charts will break first and kind of tell us that there's problems. Well they're already telling us that because we're, you know, 52% of the stocks above your 200-day moving average, that's considered a long-term average. This green line right here is where we closed on Friday. And, you know, below this area is pretty bad um, times in the market. So um, we want these levels to hold for sure. Okay, I want to go to the, um, spend a few minutes on just showing you the Stock charts technical ranking again 100 is the 99.9 .9 is probably the best stock out there so that's going to be Shopify um, and all of these others uh, what we want to look for is the the number of stocks within a group that are above 75 and that kind of tells us where the strength is so all of these are utilities and just look at how all of them have very strong scooter rankings till we get down to these very few at the end here. Uh, Max and Power, Just Energy, and Boyle, uh, Borlax Group. These are pretty weak. And so, um, you know, looking at, here's Interjex. This, this chart looks like it's just starting to break down. Brookfield Infrastructure, that chart, um, you know, is just losing its momentum. So it's not that it's terrible, it's just losing its momentum. Now when we compare that with, here's Atco, um, Fortis, you know, hitting new highs today, so that's nice. Transelta breaking down now. It takes a while for the scooter ranking. I like it more for uh, getting me in than getting me out. I've always said that. It doesn't seem to react very well, but that Polaris infrastructure, this one looks really nice. Um, trying to make new 52-week highs here. So it uh, doesn't have too far to go. Canadian utilities pushing up to new highs. So again, these utilities are a nice place to be because they've got a little more um, revenue or a little more dividend on them. And here's Shopify, yeah, 99.3. So there's actually something slightly higher than that this week. Uh, but look at that chart. That is straight up into the moon. So that's a beautiful ride. Um, this GPS technology shot up and then went sideways. Trilogy, this one's just starting to get moving. So I like this one a lot. Um, this this is a very interesting place and you could set your stop relatively close. 
Descartes Systems really doing okay, really nice uptrending stock. Constellation Software um, really having a fabulous 2019 up from about 800 bucks to 1200, so a 50% ride. So that one's been good. Uh, Open Text continues to push to higher highs there, so that's nice. Uh, this one looks like a buyout or something. Uh, Pivot Technologies, pretty low price, but at least a better price action. And Terrago, this one finally broke out and continues to test the top right hand corner. Look at that move, that was six bucks. Now 12, so uh, a doubling in one year. Okay, CGI Group, this one continues to push into the top right hand corner. These are all nice names. Um, Bell, so this is uh, telecommunications pushing up nicely. Lots of things to like on these. Um, Canaxis, you get the idea. Anyway, tell us. Absolute Software, um, just holding so far, so you'd kind of want to see a breakout there if that was. Um, to get in this Shaw one, um, it's more of a utility that doesn't pay a big dividend. Um, so I'd keep cautious there. But anyway, you get the idea. These these charts are working. This Edge House system has been had been a good performer, and now um, after falling 25%, it's trying to base here in this 32 to 34 range. So something to at least look at. Um, you can see the scooter rankings down here are really poor in these other names. This two cow used to be great. Look at that drop in May. I mean, it has just unloaded. So, um, you know, you still got to use stops even if you're in some of the strongest stocks. Okay, here's materials, metals, and mining. We've got a few of them that have done really well lately, so let's just go down. Um, here's the 80% level. So there's some golds and precious metals in here. Um, quickly flipping through the charts. Champion Iron, by far, Imperial Metals, probably bouncing on that uh, news the other day. This Alistair Gold Corp trying to push back up. And again, I mentioned the gold chart looks like it's trying to build a base here on that PPO. And if we could start to turn up now, that would be quite bullish. Looking just at, you know, Alistair Gold and Kirkland Lake, you know, these are, here's West Dome, same thing. They're all trying to get going here. And if they do, I think you want to be on board. So try and watch that one. That one's obviously taken off already. Santerra Gold, new 52-week high. That's a nice place to look, just pulling back. Semifo, um Aryan Resources. So these are um, nice chart shapes on here. Here's Grand Columbian trying to get going. Ivanhoe Mines consolidating, uh, Sandstorm Gold, you get the idea. So some of those are, uh, don't, don't throw the gold sector away. There's some good names there and I think um, uh, some opportunity to be had. Okay, um, so continuing the precious metals, lots of them have very poor scooter ranking. So just be careful. If they don't have a strong one yet, there's no reason to get in. Um, here's your West Coast Forestry. These things are terrible. They're right at the bottom end of the group. Uh, so, you know, that's not a chart we need to own just yet. We could wait for it to build a base. First Quantum Minerals um, rolling over very, very hard. So... Here's the Air Transat. You can see why that would help the industrial sector. Um, this Kelso Technologies, this one's just been a rocket. Uh, Carmana, continuing Badger Daylighting. These are very strong. And here's CAE. This one, um, really a nice surge last week, but we had I had written an article on it um, at about 26 or 27 down there, and that is a very nice breakout. Uh, Ballard Power, this one's interesting with new seven-month highs here just in the last couple of weeks. Uh, Westport finally getting some price action going. But you can see these scooter rankings are starting to shoot up on some of these, so at least it gives you some places to look for stocks that might be moving. And how do you get to this? You just go to um, your dashboard. And then down on this member tool side over here, you can click in um, under reports, and here's scooter reports. So, sorry, I should have gone. Here's report and analysis tool, scooter reports. And so you click in, and then you have to select Toronto up here. So don't forget about that part. And then again, you can click on the scooter ranking, and then the sector that you want to look at, and it'll help put them in that order. But I think the, the most important thing here is the bigger market looks to me, I, I'm very worried about the right shoulder setup here where um, 
the defensives are leading the market. We don't have a lot of um, reasons to go higher. Global growth is slowing or global activity is slowing. The purchasing managers index coming in so hard. All of those things add up to suggest to me, you know, be very, very cautious. And there's a reason there's so many people are often these dividend and income trusts because, um, you know, the other charts, you know, I showed you a couple of them were up really nicely and then just fell over and slammed hard. Um, so again, to, to just cover off some of these, you know, here's uh, banks. They're okay, 75. They're not great, but they're at least in the top half. But these insurance companies, um, you know, so here's insurance up here, 83.7, IGM, investment, property managers. Um, uh, here's another insurance, Intact Financial. And that chart just keeps going. So maybe try looking around at some of these other areas and, and see if you can find some things you like. So hopefully there's some news there for you. But in general, I'm very cautious because I'm not happy with the materials, the energy sector, or the financials for the most part, like the banks. Um, globally, the banks are very weak. So with all of that, stay cautious out there. Um, hopefully I'm not being too bearish. But with the defensives leading, I think it does tell us what we should do. And we only have you know, half the market participating above their 200-day moving average. Thanks, everybody. Have a good couple of weeks. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. This recording shows you how to find the stock charts technical reports for different types of markets. First of all, over here under the member tools on the left hand side, you want to scroll down to the third section called reports and analysis tools and find SCTR reports or stock charts technical ranking reports. What this does is it brings up stocks in the order of their price performance and shows you which ones are doing better. So if you want large cap stocks, you're going to pick, it's going to open to your default page. But if you want mid cap stocks or small cap stocks, it'll show that up. If you want a Canadian marketplace, as an example, you would click on here. And for India marketplace, you would click on India, obviously. And then for the US, there's one more option, and that is the ETFs. And so you can sort everything by that. When you are in these options or in these different groups, they will uh, come up with the top rank scooter um, at the very top. And then it'll, uh, you also have the ability to sort by industry or sector by clicking on the top. So I have it um, where the top, is, the top stock is listed as 99.9 .9 and going down from there. And then I could click on industry and sector if I wanted to. And this is going to give me, uh, it's going to rank it by sector, then within sector, which industry group, and then what the SCTR ranking is. So the way I would use this is I want to look for groups that have a lot of stocks in with very high um, SKU rankings. In this case, Walt Disney is one of the best ones, but for the most part, the rest of the group is not. So I would stay focused on buying those stocks in that top of that group. The second uh, thing to watch for is stay away from groups that don't have anything in the top 25%. That usually means they're pretty weak. You might want them for a dividend play, but nothing else. Anyway, hopefully that helps you sort based on scooter ranking. If you're interested in trading Alexander Elder's Come Into My Trading Room or Trading for a Living book, uh, we have the settings on stock charts to do that. First of all, the Elder Candle style. Then you could use Keltner bands to set up the width. These are adjusted based on the ATR and the force index, of course, as well as his MACD or the regular MACD. So here's how you do that. You'd select Elder Impulse System from the drop down menu on chart type. You'd select Keltner channels and pick the width that you want, and it has to be one that fits nicely. And then Force Index and MACD. And again, the way you pick the Keltner channel width is you want it to just touch the top of most of the, the primary uptrend bars so you get out just at the right time. Anyway, enjoy trading for a living.